This is the ultimate gaming router from D-Link. Yes, I know. This is a D-Link Ultra Performance Series router, the AC5300MU MIMO Ultra Wi-Fi router. This is about £300 worth of gaming router. I mean, look at those aerials. That, that's a ridiculous amount of aerials. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing that this delivers performance, solid performance. We've got Broadcom inside, 4x4 data streams, 1.4 GHz dual core processor inside, the MU MIMO technology, and tri band. So, around this side, uh, it just tells us a little bit about the MIMO technology having multiple routers in your home, which is something that I do. Uh, I, I will be using this as our central router, and I have a couple of other D Link routers that work as offshoots of this one, essentially access points. Single user MIMO technology. Uh, router transmits data through to one Wi-Fi device at a time. So this uh, does deal with phones, laptops, games consoles and TV boxes all at the same time, giving over a channel for each of them, which is a, an excellent setup. And I know another, a lot of other routers do do that, but uh, not quite as stylishly as this one because it's big and red. Okay, so we have Smart Collect, Connect, uh, allocates the best possible band for optimal performance, meaning you probably won't see the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz bands. Um, actually, I'm just noticing two 5 gigahertz and one 2.4 gigahertz bands. Um, so you, it'll dish out what's best for whatever uh, connection that it's getting. And D-Link, I have been using two of their other routers at the, uh, for a while now, and this does work rather well. The odd time you do get a bit of a connection issue whenever it first tries to connect. However, it's uh, always sorted itself out in the second or third attempt to connect. Advanced AC Smart Beam, focused Wi-Fi signals for faster, more reliable connections. Easy setup, USB 3.0, my D-Link Cloud, see what's connected to your monitor, See what's connected and monitor your network from any PC, smartphone or tablet. High power antennas, intuitive UI, intelligent QoS, which uh, is traffic optimization, delivers seamless performance for your applications. That MIMO stuff, 4x4 data streams, supports four simultaneous, su supports four simultaneous data streams through, with increased, for th increased throughput and a 1.4 gigahertz dual core processor inside then down here we well we'll go through that uh, as we're opening up the box so let's do that now okay so there we have the router sitting on top, it looks pretty cracking. Really, look at that. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Right, so we have a box at the back, which has a European power cable. Not terribly useful. We have a box at the side, which is a power brick, which we will find useful, uh, with a, a connector at the end, and the power brick does say... Output 12 volts, 5 amps, input... 240 volts, 1.5 amps, 50 to 60 hertz. I know people care about those sorts of things. Also, if they happen to have lost theirs and they're looking for one in the future, that's what you need. Another little box has a UK power connector. We'll use that instead. We have some screws for wall mounting it. And we have a CAT. Doesn't say, but it's hopefully a CAT 6 or CAT 5E cable. And then the router itself. So we have a nice cutout as well. <laughs> wow, look at that. With protective plastic on top, 
we'll attach the antennas in a minute. We'll have a look at it naked so that it's less intrusive. Around this side we have the uh, the front. No, the back. No, the front. No, the. We have one end here, and then we have three antenna connectors along here. Around the back we have antenna connectors here with little protective caps, dust caps like you would have on the wheels of your car. We have a USB 3, USB 2, a reset button, WPS, connect cloud, run wizard. That's stuck over the uh, ethernet ports. We have internet in here, power, uh, DC in, router and extender switcher, which is becoming increasingly more common on routers um, so because you might have an old one that you don't want to use as a router anymore and you want to just be able to switch it over to an extender and shove it at one end of your house so that it turns into an access point. So collect cloud devices and run wizard and we have four ethernet connectors underneath there. On the bottom we have two holes for wall mounting and then this side we have these connectors for antennas again. Uh, we'll take this off. Wow, that's satisfying, isn't it? Look at that, that's gorgeous. And we have our connectors down the front here. We have, these are just our LED lights. We have power, uh, internet connection, 2G communication, 5G communication, uh, USB and then SS connections. Okay, so that looks rather well. We'll start by building it up because all the antennas are sitting here ready to go. We also have at the bottom of the box some stuff. We have a wireless configuration card that I'm not going to show you. We have a CD with your drivers. We have a quick start guide. We have a warranty and a safety information pamphlet. We have extender mode extends to your existing network. You may configure the DIR 895 to operate as an access, access, access point or media bridge. Then we have a cloud service mobile app. There's the QR code if you want to go and grab that. And then the D-Link GPL code statement. Great, that's uh, riveting information for everyone to get down with. Right, so attaching these things on, there's our very plastic antenna with a little bit of protective uh, plastic around the top that I'll attach them all on, then I'll remove these individually. I'm just noticing this says 2.4 and 5 gigahertz on here. And then around the back we have the D-Link ones that say the name D-Link. And they're 2.4 to 5 gigahertz. Very tasty, very tasty indeed. So that's her all set up. We just need to remove these little pieces of plastic. And that's her all unprotected and ready to rock. So we're going to go down and install this. We'll have a look at the uh, the back end of it, the web UI, and see what that does. Uh, and uh, we'll go and do that now. Okay, so zipping through here, this is the D-Link front end that allows us to input our admin password. Um, it's a very simple thing. You can either go to it by going to 192.168.0.1 or to the D-Link link that's provided. All the information that you see in here is temporary, uh, as I will be sending this back in the next 
couple of weeks, so by the time you see this, it'll probably all have already gone back. But this is the front end that shows you the internet connection, uh, what you can do around here. You would run through this wizard first and foremost to set up your internet and other devices that are connected to it. Uh, as you can see here, my internet is already set up. And there's a couple of options for you to mess around with if you have particular settings and IPv4 and IPv6 are compatible here and some functions surrounding those options. Obviously you can set up dynamic IP addresses and that sort of thing as well. If, to, if you're a static type person, that'll be useful to you. Your network information, uh, you can reset that as well. You've got the D-Link option there for logging in locally. Then there's SharePort as well, which allows you to have a sort of media server on your network that you can upload photographs to whenever you walk in through the door. And of course, there's my D-Link integration as well. Keeping all your D-Link hardware under the one roof, which is very handy as well if you've got security cameras and that sort of thing. There's all the typical features you would expect of a router, like firewalls and port forwarding. Port forwarding is remarkably simple. Um, I know a lot of people would use it for, especially if you have media servers and that sorts of things running on your network. Plug in an address, hit the device, and away you go. If you have kids and things like that as well, or if you're using this for business point of view, uh, you have website filters as well that you can remove websites or allow particular websites to be viewed. And of course, you can also put in your VPN details as well if you happen to be using one. Remarkably simple to do that. Router can also do various different things like be able to save setups and that sort of thing and apply firmwares itself, which is really useful. Uh, you can also do all of this from your mobile device wherever you happen to be, if you get a notification to say that things aren't working terribly well. Statistics I particularly like because they're very clear and very simple, although they're really only monitored in real time. Here you can see what internet usage is happening. Above that you have LAN, which we are currently connected on the local area connection via ethernet. Then there's Wi-Fi as well. You get the 2.4 and the five gigahertz spectrums broken down so you can analyze to see who's accessing what, where, and who's hogging all of the bandwidth. It's worth noting that on that main page, you can actually break down what is happening and where uh, by simply clicking on the actual input or output. Here you can see the SharePoint is enabled but not being used at the moment and the media server is disabled. And then very handily you can go and see everything that's actually connected to your network and in what way it is. You can see that most of things are connected via Ethernet and there's a couple down the bottom that are Wi-Fi and you can label these as well. It updates quite frequently as you can see the Amazon Fire TV here has, is moving uh, as it tends to access the internet uh, more recently than something else. Going in, you can quite easily label things so that you get a better grip on what's going on because some of them are a little cryptic. So turning that to Fire TV, you can see it bouncing about as it and the Roku tussle to see who's the most active on this network at any given time. It is a bit annoying that most of them are unknown and then some of them can be really cryptic that you don't actually know what they are, like this Cisco one. I haven't the foggiest what that is, but it's plugged in somewhere in the house, so it could be anything. So save for another couple of little features. That's pretty much it. This is the D-Link AC5 300MU MIMO Ultra Wi-Fi router. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a fantastic router and the speeds and range of the Wi-Fi is second to none. It looks good. It might be a little big for some people's router storage area. But other than that, it's fantastic. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you fancy. And other than that, take care.